Welcome to Long-Term Digital Preservation File Formats. This training was produced by the State Electronic Records Initiative in coordination with the Council of State Archivists. It is to introduce archivists and others who maintain electronic records to the characteristics of file formats and strategies for their long-term preservation and access. File formats let a computer know what type of data is stored in a file and what software and hardware are needed to access that data. They describe data in a specific representation and consist of a header that describes information about the contained data. We often identify file formats by the extensions at the end of file names, such as .docx, .jpg, .pdf, or .xls, although these extensions can sometimes be misleading. Media types, previously known as MIME types, are internet-based file format identifiers and can be used where an extension may not be applicable or accurate. File formats present numerous challenges to digital preservation. Obsolescence of file formats, especially of proprietary formats, can be an issue as vendors try and force adoption of their latest product. Hardware obsolescence can also be a related issue as new machines may not be able to support older software. The sheer number of formats can also present a challenge as related formats may have different characteristics with different requirements. There may be a lack of documentation to support preservation and some formats are complex with multiple interconnected dependencies. When we are looking for a sustainable file format for preservation, there are some characteristics we often look for. These include having a file format that is well documented and ideally open source and non-proprietary. Open source means that the original source code is made freely available and can be redistributed and modified. Non-proprietary means it is not licensed or restricted to one manufacturer. These characteristics support continued development of tools that can read the format. Similarly, if the file format is widely adopted, there will be a community working to ensure its continued sustainability. If the file needs to be compressed for size constraints, we want the compression to be lossless, when not a single bit of data is lost when shrinking the file size, and the format should support technical and descriptive metadata. There are several tools available to help identify file formats more specifically than just looking at the file extension. Identifying file formats ensures that the format is valid, allows for the identification of appropriate software tools for use, and assists in preservation planning by helping to assess needs for normalization, migration, and emulation. Droid, a software tool designed to perform batch identification of file formats. The tool can also generate checksums and collect file-level metadata. Jove is a file format identification, validation, and characterization tool. It is implemented as a Java application and is usable on any Unix, Windows, or OS X platform with appropriate Java installation. FIDO, command line file format identification tool written in Python. For other tools, you can also check out the file format identification category in the community-owned digital preservation tool registry, copter, at copter.digipress.org. Once you have identified what file formats you have, there are a lot of resources available to help you determine the sustainability of those formats and whether or not they are preferred preservation formats. Links to file format resources from the Library of Congress, the National Archives and Records Administration, the UK National Archives, COSA, and the Digital Preservation Coalition are included in the accompanying resource guide. PDFA is an example of a common preservation format for textual documents and other formats where the look and feel is primary. PDFA is supported by a large community of users and vendors and it has been around for a relatively long time. It was designed specifically for long-term preservation. But be aware that there are different versions of PDFA with different characteristics and not all of them work well for preservation. We generally talk about three approaches to the long-term preservation of file formats. Normalization, migration, and emulation. In all these cases we are still maintaining the originally transferred file as evidence of what was transferred. Normalization means reducing the number of formats your institution is managing by converting files to a small number of pre-selected file formats based on standards for what format best represents the characteristics of the files of particular types. There are a few strategies for implementing normalization. It can be achieved by limiting the number of accepted formats or by converting the files that are received. For example, different textual formats such as .doc, .docx, or .wpd can be converted to PDFA. Migration is very closely related to normalization, although its focus is on keeping the files in current accessible formats over time while still preserving the integrity of the digital object. It can be viewed as moving the file from one generation of format or computer technology to another to guard against obsolescence. It is sometimes referred to as refreshing the files. 
Emulation involves recreating or simulating the original computing environment to render the files in the original format. It often involves using both software and hardware to reproduce the performance of another computer of a different design in a newer environment. It can be a difficult strategy to implement since it involves translating code from one computing environment to another environment. The common examples of this are in video game preservation. File format policy statements are necessary to manage expectations of records creators. In addition, the statements provide a roadmap for preservation. They document what formats are acceptable for deposit in your repository and at what level of care they will receive. If a donor provides a file format that you have limited capacity to manage, you may only be able to provide bit level preservation rather than continued format migration for access. Your institutional capacity may change over time, so you will want to revisit your file format policy on a regular schedule to keep it up to date. Thank you for watching Long-Term Digital Preservation File Formats. The tools and resources referenced during the video, as well as additional resources that may be of assistance during each step in the transfer process, are included in the COSA Resource Center and are listed on the Companion Resource Guide with additional detail. The link to the Companion Guide is included in the video description. This training was produced by the State Electronic Records Initiative in coordination with the Council of State Archivists. The Council of State Archivists is a nonprofit membership organization of the state and territorial government archives in the 50 states, five territories, and the District of Columbia. COSA began the State Electronic Records Initiative project in 2012 to address the long-term care and access of electronic records. For additional resources on electronic records preservation and management, please visit the State Electronic Records Initiative webpage.